All right, guys. Um, just want to do a quick video, uh, uh, just to show you what we can do with uh, the MSX circus lights. Uh, if you're anything like me, you uh, probably feel that they're uh, pretty horrendous on the stock wheel, with limited choices of what colours you can have, um, and also not many modes either. Um, and for me, I just prefer white up front and I prefer red at the rear. But uh, as you know, on the stock MSX, it's uh, fairly useless with all multicolored whatnot. So um, I looked into trying to find a solution for this. Now, what I ended up with is in no way comparable to what Matthias is doing, the UC guy. Uh, his unit is very, very nice. Um, it's also plug and play, it's easy to fit, it's uh, very well made um, and it's simple and effective. Um, so this is, this is not uh, a solution which is in competition with, with Matthias, um, but it's an option. If, if you've got the time and a bit of effort, it, it's an option. So I decided to give it a go. Um, it's a bit confusing at first, or to, that I found out, because what basically happens is when the wire comes out of the board, if I remember rightly, it goes straight to the back light, and then it tees off from the back light down to the lead strips and tees off down to the front. So the problem is, if you do what I did, um, which is buy a, a little LED controller off of eBay, and you put it in place of the original plug, like Matthias does with his, you have two problems. The first problem is that whatever option you have the controller set to, it's going to show on all the strips and it's going to do some really funky things with the rear light. <clears throat> and what I found was if you select, like I say, a flashing one that comes down, you actually get this red ring will actually circle. I mean, it doesn't, it looks quite cool to be honest with you, but I think I preferred this static. Um, also the LEDs would go up and then down and up and down. So basically the LEDs was tied into all the LED strips. Um, it wasn't horrendous, but you know, it's nice to have the static, I think. Plus it means that you keep the, um, the LED meter for the battery. Not that I really use it because I just run everything through wheel log, but I guess it just keeps it more original. We've got the original battery meter plus um, the, the LEDs that go left and right when you're turning and the brake light and stuff like that. So so that was one thing that was a lot easier to start with. I just unplugged the original, plugged in a single controller and it gave me the ability to change everything but the front and back were linked plus as was this rear light assembly. So I had to find another option and the only way of doing it is to actually run two controllers. So what I did was plug in the original plug back in to feed the LED and then on on the this original light, I think there's three plugs, so there's one that goes to the board and there's two that feed out and go down each side. So you just unplug those, so you disconnect the rears, you disconnect the fronts you run one controller for the rears and you run one, one controller for the fronts. So what you actually end up with is two LED controllers <coughs> which are powered simply by teeing into the power line that goes to the rear light. And then all you do is you're linking up the two rear strips to one controller and the two front strips to another controller. So that's pretty much what you end up with in terms of layout. It's a bit of time, it's a bit of effort, um, but if you can solder, and this isn't rocket science guys, by any means, the LED strips have three wires, a plus, a minus, and a data signal. Um, so it's it's really not hard. It's just a bit of time, obviously, to, to get them up unplugged from here, extend them where you need to. To be honest, most of the wiring that I needed was already within the wheel. I think I might have used a small amount of wire I had lying about, but most of it's already in there. All you're doing is directing it into different places, 
Um, I mounted my two controllers uh, just behind this panel here um, on the right side. They're tiny, tiny little things. I will try and put a link to them somehow on the vid. Um, but the main thing is these controllers are four quid each. So for eight quid and a bit of effort, um, I think it's all right. I mean, I'm happy with it. Uh, so what you end up with, because you've got two controllers, the downside is you're going to have two um, keypads as well. So one's going to be front and one's rear. So basically what you've got is power on. <clears throat> you've got something like 360 different options to display your LEDs on this. And to be honest, half of them are where the LED, the light starts from the top and goes down and the other half are where from it starts from the bottom and goes up so really you've only got half of that really because all the difference is, is that some start from the top some start from the bottom but there is an awful lot of colors and options you can have circus if you want you can have static colors you can have pretty much anything and then when you find one that you like you can just add it on the keypad there's a little button here that says diy plus so you can scroll through, you can spend about three days if you want, scrolling through all the options that are in there as standard. Pick the ones that you want and just add them to your DIY and so it narrows them down and then you can just flick through the DIY ones that you've saved. I just took a selection here. Most of it is white stuff because I just prefer white really. There's one with a bit of green mixed in with it, one with a bit of blue. Um, but really, I just want I just wanted white. That's all I wanted. Um, so I think that was yeah, that's the one I kind of like best. I think that's fairly simple. Um, oh, and these these do all operate independently of the headlight because that's on its own circuit, so you can do whatever you want as per normal with that. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the front side of it. That's the front controller. It will also remember what it's on, so if you power off the wheel, power it on, it will just stay as whatever your last selected one was. There are a multitude of crazy things um, already in here. As I said, you've got probably 170 or so different ones. Um, so 170 start from the top and 170 will start from the bottom but other than that i mean you've, you've got stack loads in here um pretty much whatever you want so go back to my diy these are the ones i've saved that's probably one that quite like. but i just like it because it gives you like a daytime running light you can have that on without needing to have the headlight on i just Think it gives you a little bit of stuff the rear again it's exactly the same um, you can turn these off independently as well and it's all running independent of the rear light there so so for the rear i just again preferred red so i've just picked some of the red options that you get built into the controllers um, that one's come up from the bottom static red like a pulsing red i just added a blue just for a laugh really i'm sure the old bill will be well happy with that uh green for our little green machines here uh, another green option another red option i don't know how that ended up i think i'll probably get rid of that one um and that's the one i like on the rear so again similar to the front it's just a pulsing red that's all so that's what you get you end up with the downside is you've got two controllers that you've got to worry about but i'll just stick these in my rucksack that i always ride with um the other downside is it's not plug and play you've got to do a bit of wiring but it is not complicated guys by any means um the bonuses i suppose are that you've got a huge amount of colors and options that you can pick at will you can turn these off and on independently front to rear. Um, 
but I suppose the primary bonus is that it cost me the grand sum of eight quid to do this. Um, you know, I, I do a bit of soldering and stuff for, for other things, so I already had solder, I've got a soldering iron, I've got bits of wire, I've got some heat shrink, cable ties, insulating tape, all that sort of stuff is what I had already. So, so yeah, for eight quid, guys, um, that's it. You can do it, and you've got pretty much uh, a good setup for your MSX. Um, the only other quick thing I'll mention, uh, while I remember, um, oh, I can't find it. I uh, I bought a louder buzzer for this wheel, um, which someone recommended off the forums. Um, quite a large black cylindrical buzzer which a guy had drilled a hole in his wheel and fitted it through there and it's got like a screw on bezel that you then screw over the top it looks neat it's really nice so because uh, this guy had used one I thought oh, I'll get one of those and I'd be without even trying it I just thought right, I'll wire it up everything else and in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'll chuck it over the other side to leave space on this side if I ever want to put in another uh, 259 watt hour pack but of course I drilled the side panel fitted the buzzer turned it on and it wasn't even as loud as the original buzzer so I thought I don't know if I've got a duff buzzer I don't know what's going on so in the end what I did was I simply just reused the original buzzer because I'd already drill drilled the hole in the side panel so I couldn't not put anything in it so I just moved the original buzzer which is internal on this side put it round on the other side <coughs> which is just here so this is the original buzzer that's been extended over to this side sprayed black and then all I did was use the screw on bezel that came with the other buzzer I had to um, dremel it out a bit and just use that just to finish off to make it neat really and this this original buzzer it does have to be spaced a bit carefully because as you as as you put it in as it is it sticks quite far out so I've had to um, just use some spacing material which is basically like an old plastic chopping board um, dremel out a hole it's just like a big washer really and that spaces the buzzer back a bit just to the level of this bezel so it's all siliconed in there quite neat but um, so now, yeah, I've ended up with a buzzer that is the original one, but it is noticeably louder because it's now on uh, the external side of the wheel. Uh, so that's just another little thing I did while I was in there and having a bit of a play about, really. Um, but yeah, there we are, guys. Um, something to consider, like I said. Um, Matthias's one is is a, is a lovely unit. Um, and if you've got a dollar and you don't want to muck about, then it's, it is good. Um, but another option is this way. So uh, see what you think um, and choose your weapon, as they say, uh, if you decide that you do want to play with the LED lights on your MSX. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.